Well, welcome to our little corner of the internet here. And of course, we've got lots of folks who are watching on the internet. As we are going through time here, of course, we're kind of getting into all kinds of uncharted territory. Many, many, many things have been canceled, postponed, whatever you want to describe it as, including Bill's Weather 101s. Overall, we lost more than a dozen of these uh, that were coming up from March into April, where we we're going to be talking to the kids about how weather works. So part of what we do with Weather 101, and by the way, over the last 21 years, we've seen over 125,000 Kentucky kids. Well, now we're basically opening this up to the whole world. Now, this is not the exact Bill's Weather 101s that we're doing because those involved kids. And obviously we aren't going to be able to do that, but we're going to try and give you some weather lessons here pretty much every day. We'll do the best we can to get them up here every day for you until we kind of run out. But if nothing else, we're going to build up a nice library here for you. So this is kind of going back to the old 1970s. So parents, moms and dads, you might remember something like this. We are when they had the game shows and one of the, uh, the little prizes you got to tip back was the home game. Well, this is it. It's Bill's Weather 101, the at home edition. And of course, as we're recording this on Thursday, March the 19th, today is a special day astronomically. This is the, well, it be the night of the vernal equinox. We're calling it tis the season of change because we are now officially changing from winter to spring. Yes, I know we talked about meteorological winter back on March the 1st. Well, we do that for bookkeeping. It's much easier to keep track of March 1st to May 31st rather than trying to remember, okay, what year did the uh, solstice or the equinox fall on? Was it March 20th, 21st? Was it the 19th? Which, by the way, this is about as early as it can get. But why do we have the seasons? Well, the first part of the lesson here is you've got to know that the Earth's axis is tilted. We are not straight up and down. Kind of looks like the old soap opera, as the world turns, right here on the other network. Anyway, it's tilted at 23 and a half. YouTube it, kids, you'll find it. 23 and a half degrees is what our axis is tilted at. That's what gives us our seasons. So let's talk about how and why this works. Now, first of all, we make a nice revolution around the sun. As we are coming up here on March the 19th, this is the time of the vernal equinox. And so as you're looking here, you notice that the axis on all of these positions is always pointed in the same direction. At this point in the Earth's history, that direction is pointed up toward the North Star, Polaris. That's why it's got its name. Uh, over the course of thousands of years, our axis actually wobbles some, something called precession. And as it wobbles some, uh, it will point to different stars over the course of thousands of years. But right now, for us, it's Polaris. So when we are sitting here at the equinox, you see, and it's the same at the autumnal equinox, uh, how there's essentially no part of the Earth that's pointed directly toward the sun. When we get to the solstice that comes up in June, you notice that the northern hemisphere is pointed toward the sun. That's our summertime. The opposite of that for us, back on the winter solstice, you notice how we're pointed away from the sun. Well, that's our winter time, but it's all caused by how our axis is tilted. So with all that in mind, the vernal equinox. And by the way, we're, and we've got this in the text for you as well. If you are looking at why it's called vernal equinox, it comes from Latin. First of all, ver is Latin for spring. When you make it vernal, it now becomes an adjective. So it's as spring. We get to equinox, equa, equa is equal. Nox is Latin for night or darkness. So it is spring-ish equal night. That's what's going on here. And it's on, again, March 19th. 1150, by the way, is the exact time where the Earth's axis is neither tilted toward or away from the sun. It's straight up. Equal amount of daylight and darkness all latitudes across the globe. Now, for us specifically, it's really not equal when you think about it because of how we compute sunrise and sunset. So today's actual length of daylight in Lexington, central Kentucky, 12 hours, 7 minutes. So again, that's not the perfect 12 hours. Why? Because how we compute sunrise and sunset. For sunrise, it's when that first little bit of the sun crosses the horizon for sunset. It's when that last little bit of the sun crosses the horizon. So you've got this entire solar disk to take into account. And that's why on the day of the equinox, our daylight hours are a little bit more than what they otherwise would be. Now, if we computed it all right there in the middle, it would be equal hours of daylight and nighttime, but we don't. So it's not. Old wives tale. Can you stand an egg up on the equinox? Sure. 
your hand is steady and you're on kind of a rough surface, it makes it a little easier if you're on a rough surface as opposed to a very smooth, glassy table. Uh, but it's the little ridges on the bottom of the egg. Note the egg, it's not smooth on the bottom. There are little tiny ridges that you can feel there. It's those little tiny ridges that act as almost like a little tripod that is when you stand the egg on end. If you've got a good, good hand, uh, you will be able to stand up. And you can do it anytime, not just at the time of the equinox. So, yeah, we know you're uh, kind of shut in. You're doing your schoolwork from home. Hopefully this little lesson here on what the vernal equinox is and the start of a new season is helpful in your learning process. Again, tune back here to LAX18 and LAX18.com as we continue to bring you Bill's Weather 101 at home. Thanks for watching.